Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for coming and joining me here in my shop. I'm going to be focused on this guy today, the Heathkit Sweep Generator. And I'm going to have to explain why I'm flipping back and forth between these two projects here. Uh, so it makes a little sense. Yes, there's a little sense to what I'm doing here. Um, so this receiver uh, is here to be uh, tuned up. I changed the capacitors in the receiver and after that I began uh, attempting alignment. Uh, before really getting into it, I investigated this guy for quite a while. I discovered that the Heathkit uh, TV alignment generator uh, is a very valuable tool in a shop like this. I have had this for quite a few years. I completely had completely underestimated how valuable it might be because it says TV alignment. And of course, I'm not doing television sets, but it can be very helpful for a lot of things. The special thing about this particular one is some previous owner installed an additional circuit in it, a tube and a lot of parts, to create a additional output, which is right here, which in the end leads to something very important that is missing up until now. And if you've been watching my videos, you know when I was doing the alignment on here, I was trying to bring up this shape at some point. I was trying to bring this one up too, but this one here. And uh, for a while I had it in kind of a flat top thing, and then I had a curve thing, and then I, had a, I left it with a sharp thing here. At one point during that process, I tried to establish a marker on the side of the of the response curve. I tried to do it just by using a marker amp in a classic way, you just just apply another frequency. In fact, 10.7. If everything were right, 10.7 would put a marker right here. What is a marker? In fact, it's the interference between two signals, and that interference will occur at a certain frequency. And then you know for sure what the frequency is at all these points. Otherwise, you really can't tell what the frequency of these guys are. You need an additional marker amp. The problem with that, I'm going to make a diagram here. Make some lousy, lousy pictures. So my artistic abilities are very, very limited. But I think I can explain it better. I'll just find a pencil. Show me a pencil quickly. How about a pen? There we go. So we have a curve. I'm going to draw it vertically here. We have a curve like that. And what we're concerned about is the width of this. Well, the width to where? The width to where? The width out to here? Where, where is here exactly anyway on this curve? So the general rule is when you're looking at response, and I think this is probably what they did with the diagram we were just looking at. You kind of come down about three decibels down down from the peak, and I draw a line across. If the shape is right, then you can state the frequency of these points, and then all I got to do when I'm doing my alignment is make sure when I get a shape that you know this kind of thing, right, this point is the correct frequency with a pip. See the nice little pip there? But if, that's not really how it works. When you just apply a marker signal, the signal, if we do it right at the top here, it's, it, it's, it's kind of obvious, but what happens is the line starts doing this. And you can see this on the scope fairly clearly. If you increase the frequency of the, of the marker, this will, will travel down and show up down here, and you'll be able to see it down there. It'll look a little fuzzy spot. So you could look at the marker frequency and say the frequency of this point on this display, on, the, on this waveform, is so much. So when I tried that, when you move this kind of mark down the side, you get, you get, you get something like this. Now you tell me, where is the point in this? Now, I did that experiment, I did it right on video, everybody watched me do it, I may not have said what was going on in my mind. I tried to put a marker here, <clears throat> knowing that this guy has a feature to solve this problem. And I've known that all along. <clears throat> With this guy operating, <clears throat> excuse 
excuse me, with the extra circuit in it, instead of using a, a RF interference, it manages to place an audio pip, if you like, at the right point in the sweep display. Using an audio frequency, instead of getting something like that, you get something like this. You get a very, very sharp pip. Very, very... And if you move it down the side here, it's going to end up looking like this. It's going to be just... This is the idea, anyway. And you're going to know for sure, by knowing the frequency of the marker generator, maybe using a frequency counter, you're going to know exactly what these are. Can't do it without this special added circuit. Now, how, how did... What, did some guy just dream up a circuit and add it? No. No. Somebody found... Somebody, the guy who did it, found this article in the magazine, Radio Electronics. I think this is from 1963. July 1963. Now, you know, when I was a kid, I, I'd look in these magazines because I had a few of them too and whatnot, and uh, I'd see these things where guys were recommending circuits and I think to myself nobody in the world actually attempts to build this stuff out of a magazine article oh yes this circuit with this tube 6AU6 tube is built into there and it's done really professionally it's a really good job whoever did it unfortunately the fellow's probably no longer with us but if he is and if he's watching you did a great job thank you very much I am now going to concentrate on making this thing work so I can get the pips and I can complete the alignment of this properly. Now, the last video I went all the way through and finished the alignment steps. Well, I didn't really finish them, I just worked my way through them. The purpose of that is more to train me than it is to uh, adjust the receiver. It's more to open my eyes, discover any problems, sort stuff out, get everything ready for another pass and another pass. So, so I knew all along while I was doing that I'm going to do it again. And I also knew that this guy has the potential to make it really nicely, really nice to do. Um, so, that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to make this guy produce the markers. Now, now, another thing is, boy, I tell you, the things that can go wrong. For a couple of days there, I didn't post any videos while I was working on this stuff, because I couldn't get anything to work right. And then I came in here one evening, and I changed the scope lead. I'm currently using this this scope lead. This I just bought this. I just from, uh, I just bought this a few years ago or whatever. As soon as I changed scope leads, everything changed. With the old scope lead, whether there's something wrong with it or not, I don't know. I think there's something wrong with it. It was not feeding much signal to the scope, so to compensate, not knowing you know, not knowing anything. I just cranked up the output on this guy. With a heavy, heavy signal coming in, I overloaded this. So I'm getting a somewhat correct sized display on the scope, sort of the right kind of voltage, but I'm doing it by driving a huge signal in, and I just messed my head up until I changed the scope lead, which I don't think I explained. So with the new scope lead, I discovered that you need the output of this to go from maxed out to minimize. That's how much different it made it's as if the scope lead wasn't even attached. Once I had this turned down to a more correct level, by feeding a more correct level into the receiver, wave shapes started appearing. Great. So that's allowed me to get through the, the alignment uh, process. <clears throat> Maybe somewhat half-assed, but that's okay. I, I'm, I'm fine with being half-assed at, at the start maybe even a quarter asked. Can you imagine that? Each time through, we learn a little more, make less mistakes, get more familiar with it. <clears throat> At this point, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on in this radio in terms of the IF, because I aligned it. I know it has a sharp IF, probably too sharp, probably not passing enough signal on to the subsequent circuits that when I tried to align subsequent circuits, I had trouble, probably right from the very start. That's okay. Um, with me knowing what is going on with the receiver, I can now work with the signal generator and interpret the results properly. <clears throat> In other words, I can know 
if what I'm seeing on my oscilloscope or wherever is really something to do with this or something to do with this. At the start, I couldn't sort it out. I don't know who the bad actor was. Turns out my oscilloscope lead was one of the bad actors. The other bad actor, of course, is me because I'm on the learning curve. I'm somewhere on the learning curve here. <clears throat> so right now, what I'm going to do before I go any further with this is I'm going to go away and read this article again. It's a nicely written article. The, uh, the, the fellow who designed this recommended the additional circuit be built into this area here. The fellow who did it built it up in this area. Now that tells me that whoever did this was really, uh, uh, must have been an engineering grade person. Probably a ham radio licensed guy. Maybe a person working professionally in electronics. Maybe this was in a repair shop. Um, it's hobby grade, but it's high grade hobby grade. And this thing has features, the extremely broad sweep being the main feature, that really sets it apart. So, uh, okay, so I'm gonna go away and read this. In fact, I'm gonna go sit on my deck and read this paper, enjoy the weather outside while there's still some weather to enjoy out there. And when I come back in, we'll just get busy on that thing, see what we can get out of it. Thanks for, for listening to this talk. Okay, so I'm right at the point where I'm ready to turn on the receiver and I've got the sweeper sweeping. I don't know exactly what it's doing right now because I don't have a receiver on. The RF output is onto the IF input. The uh, marker output is going nowhere just now. I'm leaving that out of the picture until I have the first image kind of stabilized. I have my marker generator ready back here, just you know, warming up on that, but it's not uh, involved just yet. First thing is just to get the uh, IF response curve onto my oscilloscope here. So let's flip on the receiver. Hopefully it'll be right there. Make sure the volume's turned down. And here we go. Okay, not much to see on the scope here. So uh, one problem is the sweeper may be sweeping outside of the uh, range of the uh, IF. Don't think so. Uh, let's 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 listen to this. What's the radio doing here? The radio is very very quiet. Hmm. It's full volume. Uh, you know, I've got this attenuator right down to zero. I think that might be the problem here. Let's turn down the volume. I'll turn up a little wee bit. Okay, something coming out of the speakers now. That's a good start. Still nothing on the scope. Okay. Why would there be nothing on the scope? It could be because I never connected the scope. That's probably the problem. So I've reconnected the detector circuit here. I'm just gonna hook the scope up to it now. And there it is. Yeah, you can't see it with that camera, but you can see it with this one. That little blip there. So let's work on expanding the blip. First of all, that's the times one on my scope lead. I can make this a little more sensitive, I think. So now we don't want we don't want a big powerful display. We don't want a big powerful signal going into the radio. That's the problem. Let me just turn it way up here. Yeah. So turn it down. Well, it would hopefully be just a little bigger than that. I'm going to adjust the sweep width. And this will uh, this will change the size of the pip. Change the sound a lot too, eh? The reason it's going below the line is I've left this on AC. That's a little better. Now we'll give it a little more juice here. Lovely. Put it lower on the scope. Give it a little more RF signal. How far can you go before it's distorted? Let's find out.
because that looks fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna shrink it, shrink it, build it up. So right there, see, see how it seems to be not wanting to go much higher? Instead, the flanks are going up. That's gotta be a limit. Can you hear it? Hear it in the speakers? So we're gonna go down, say about there. Lovely, beautiful, fantastic. Okay, but the question is, what frequencies are on there? For instance, what frequency is the peak at? And where, what frequency would this be? Right here, or right here. That's what the pips are all about. Now, pip time. So what I've done is I have two connections, for, uh, whoops, right over here. You can see I used a splitter on the input. One is the scope lead we're looking at. The other one is a cable that runs over to the, uh, to the, to the signal generator. Let's flip cameras here. The cable that's coming is right here. So this should be connected to that and something should happen. But I really think we need to have a marker generator producing a signal. Now there's an internal marker generator, this one here. This one only goes down to 19 uh, megahertz. There's a trick I read that you can set it to double 10.7 and somehow you're gonna get 10.7 out of it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try that. I'm gonna use an alternate uh, signal generator, we're going to use this guy. Now its output is connected nowhere, so it's connected. The signal level output is uh, fairly low right now. It would normally go into this term, this connector here. This is the external marker amp input. I'm just going to clip it on the back of the uh, back of that terminal there. Whoops. That's not cooperating very well. Let's try it again. Okay, that's now connected. up a wee bit. Okay, this is a real long shot now. What happens if you hook this up? The marker generator is running at 100 kilohertz because I'm looking for 100 kilohertz marks all the way along. That's pretty low. Uh, this is the writer of the article here, he never talks about pushing anything that low. But let's give it a try see what happens. Maybe I'm not doing this right. We're going right into here. This is the assumption that the circuit works. And oh boy, did the scope go wild there. Okay, let's pull it out again. I'm going to give you the close-up view of this. I'm going to connect the cable again to the supposed audio marker pip output. The adder circuit output. There, got the cable locked on. We got this thing flying up here. Let's just turn this down and see where it goes. Ooh, we got something, something here. Now, I don't think this is a marker pip. I don't, I don't think that at all. I think it's what's happened is it disturbed things enough that some weird stuff has happened. So let's pick it back up. Just leave it like that. Now, what, what can I try here? First of all, the marker amp switch is switched off on the signal generator so the internal marker generator isn't operating but I think I have to beat I think I have to beat the external against the internal well that sounds painful let's try that okay turning on the marker amp the marker amps on turning up the level of the marker amp oh that's doing something on the look at that something's going up and down there what is going on? I don't know. Okay, I'm going to vary the frequency of the marker amp. Let me show you just exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm, 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 this is the marker amp level control. I'm about to vary the frequency of the marker amp. And, holy smokes! Show me the marker. Have a look at this. Okay, I'm varying the marker amp frequency around. And what? Ooh, look at that thing. Whoa, what happened there? What, what did happen there? Because the radio stopped. Ooh, lots of strange stuff here. What to make of that? I don't know. Um, so I'm going to vary the output level. Oh, let's try the marker amp level control. Well, that's good. I, I don't think that marker pip, as we see it, is really what is supposed to be there. Um, that looks much more like a RF, uh, RF level marker. Okay, we don't know what frequency that marker is at either. So I have two signal generators running at the marker amp. Let me get rid of the. We'll just let's just use the internal marker amp for a minute. I will disconnect the other external generator here. Okay, I disconnected it and nothing whatsoever happened. So I think that suggests the external marker amp is doing nothing for us. Okay, so there was an instruction in the manual here that said something about, I'm not going to be able to find it right away, this guy's article about 10.7, which he said would be 10.7 doubled would be 20, 21.4. Okay, so I'm going to set it around 21.4 based on the dial. I don't know how accurate this is. 21.4 would be right in this range here. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, I don't think that's the sharp marker pip I'm supposed to see. Um, if I had a frequency counter associated with this and I could tell for sure what the marker frequency is, then I'd be golden, I think. Well, I wouldn't be golden, maybe maybe silver, maybe bronze at this point. The wild stuff at the ends of the display, you know, the, this crazy thing here and this thing here, we're just ignoring that as some unimportant artifact of everything. Well, that's interesting. Let's try to make this external marker amp do something now. How would I do that? I'm going to leave the internal... Did I say amp? I'm switching the words amp and generator around here. The, we'll use, leave the internal marker generator that's making that mark there. And bring in the alternate generator. Just see what it does. Okay, i got to reconnect it here. Okay. Now... Get the camera out of the way so I can stand on the right spot here. Okay, marker generator's at 100 kilohertz. Just gonna take it up, 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 and see what happens. Okay, so nothing's happening. It's up, up, up is a bad description. It's uh, this band I'm barely getting anywhere. I'm just cranking this control. I got to 200, 200 kilohertz, nothing happening. So the signal is very low. So I'm gonna go back down to 100. Pips to be every hundred kilohertz across that display. Okay, right at hundred. I'm gonna start jacking up the output. Here we go. That's ten times. That's ten times ten. That's a hundred times stronger. I only have one more setting, but it usually does the trick. Okay, just checking others. Here we go. And I don't see a thing. Okay. So I'm gonna start waving the frequency around on the marker generator. anywhere. We are getting nowhere with it. Okay, let me uh, double check, make sure it's connected. It certainly is. Uh, let's just go all way up in frequency until we see something. Okay, so we're up around 500 kilohertz now. 
There's nothing going on. We're at 1.5 megahertz. And we're kind of in the range uh, that is talked about with this generator. I'm varying the frequency around, looking for anything to show up. And nothing showing up here. Okay, let's go even higher frequency. I'm going to get up around 10 pretty soon. So we are, we're going up 6, 7, 8 megahertz. Uh, output is strong. 9 megahertz. Okay, you got to change bands. And I'm at the wrong end of the band. So we're coming down from 30 megahertz now. 20 megahertz. 15, and coming, coming in, we're at 10.9, so we're, this has been great, 10.7 right now, I don't see a thing, so this is not producing any result, why would that be, well, Far be it for me to explain this stuff right now. A couple things we can do here. Uh, marker amp level control. That's... There go. Look at this. What's it doing there? This is the very lowest level of this control. Hmm. Is that a right down here? Get a pretty sharp thing there. Uh, it's similar to the other marker pip that I, I, I didn't like, except I think I can be pretty sure that the uh, you know the center interference point, you know, the one that would mark the actual frequency, is going to be right in here. Kind of obvious that's where it would be. And I can move that up and down. Kind of, I'm changing the internal marker frequency here. Yeah. pretty good. I mean, I'm, you can see that I can move it very smoothly. And this is without the external amp. Well, the trick would be now to know what frequency that is. Now, wait a minute. How do I know this is because of the additional connection? I don't even know that. This could be the internal marker coming through. So I'm going to disconnect the cable that's feeding supposedly the audio marker uh, signal get rid of it. Here we go. Oop. Well, isn't that interesting? So I got rid of, so there's a lot of stuff coming out of that additional output, the one that should be carrying the audio frequency signal. Let me put it back in. Is this, this, I'm sure this really isn't quite what it's supposed to be. You know, cable termination problems um, but I mean in, if I got something here I can work with I think I do actually except I don't know exactly what that marker frequency is right now and back in the old days long before people had uh, digital frequency counters you knew what frequency you were on because of crystals you used crystals that you relied on crystals did things, you knew what frequency it was, you could compare things to the crystal frequency, all that kind of stuff. And that's how this is set up, except at the moment I misplaced the crystal, and the crystal is uh, way off in frequency. can't remember what it was now. Um, have I got enough here to chew on for a bit? There must be some more changes I can make to it. There's this phase control, which generally flips things around there, it just flipped it. Uh, so I'm not so sure that's working the way it's supposed to. Um, well, i got to get a frequency counter onto the signal coming out of the marker, the little extra audio, extra added marker amp, and see that. It's supposed to be an audio frequency. You know what we can do? Well, we can look at the signal. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect the scope, one scope lead, so we no longer have the IF output showing. Uh, we, we still have this thing down here. Um, 
So what I'll do now is uh, flip this to a regular scope mode, speed it up, and move it up. And that, that's what's coming out. Why does it look like that? Ooh, who knows? It looks like two signals uh, heterodyning right at this point. What two signals? What two signals would that be? Could it be my marker amp? Which is let's move the external marker amp frequency around. Oh, there is something in there, right there. You see, there's a little squiggle here. It's very hard to see on the camera. Let me see if I can just make this a little better for the camera. It's so difficult. Uh, more light right on the scope may help out the camera. Okay, that's not bad. You can kind of see the details now in the squiggle area. So moving the external marker amp around. Quite clearly see something in there. Again, this is not how this is supposed to work and I don't even know. Well, I don't know. I don't know that this is normal. Is this normal? No, it's interesting. There's two, there's two markers. You can see them moving around on the right there. Two of them. That, that, that's 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 a little curious, and they're moving they're moving together. They're moving together. They are equidistant, no matter what the external frequency is. That's pretty interesting. The external frequency is 10.945 right now, and I'm just going to reduce it right to 10.7 on the money here. Right on the money, right there. Oh, and look, it's just it's going wild in here. Let me watch the scope. I had to watch the uh, signal generator there. No, yeah, I think it's... Well, you know, it's wild added to wild. It's a little hard to tell. I don't know, is it really adding right in there? So at this point, what I've done is I've moved the, uh, the other squiggle right there on top of the other squiggle. Squiggle on squiggle 10.8. And if I set this so the other one goes in there, a little hard to see it. 10.68. No, I don't know what that means. Okay, so I'm going to move the external marker generator up this way. See the two squiggles from it are one is here and one is here. But now I'm going to move the internal marker generator frequency around. Okay, interesting enough. I'm going to move it out. Another squiggle appears here. There's one here, there's one here, but this one's, I don't know, some kind of triggering thing happening? No, there's no triggering on the... Oh, I do have the scope set to trigger. What's it triggering on? Oh, it may be triggering on the 60 cycles coming from, from up here. Uh, yeah, now I can make my scope trigger on the line. That's the scope now triggering on the 60 cycles, which is good. That cleared things up. Now there's a little tiny pip there. That's what we're after. We're after that kind of pip. We don't want that. We want that. Okay, that pip. It's right on the center line. What moves it? I'm going to move the marker generator internal frequency. Oh, where's that? Oh, that, that nice pip in the middle is just sitting there. It's going to go right through. So. So this is the internal generator going back and forth around 20 megahertz, around 20 megahertz, double 10, double 10.7. I'm going to swing it off to the side. I'm going to move the other signal generators at 10.9 right now. I'm going to move it down. There's a thing, there's a thing right there. That's 10.78. Not too interested in that. 10.7 is right there. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna, so I've got the the so so this is 10.7. I'm now going to change the sweep center frequency to try to move that into the center of my scope. Interesting, the sound changed. Who's here? Is that you? Yeah, 
mess. Okay, so I have a cat that has just shown up. And this cat is intense. Yeah, there he is, Mr. Intense. What do you want? What? Did you just eat something? You're licking your chomps there. Did you? Uh -huh. Did you want to go outside? Hey, hey, hey. Come on, don't get distracted. Pay attention. You're distracting me. Now, what do you want? Show me what you want. I think she thinks my other cat is out there. Keeps looking for her. Shadow, um, you had your chance. You had your chance. Yeah, I came in. She had a snack. Now she wants to go back outside. My wife won't let her out, so she's down here. <laughs> trying to con me into letting her out. Um, oh, yeah, we were looking up here at the skull, weren't we? Keeping an eye on it. Well, that was great. Now I, I totally lost track of where I was on this. So we've moved, we've moved the center sweep frequency to put 10.7 basically in the center of the screen. I'm going to change the sweep width here. That's minimum sweep width. So what we're going to do is, oh, there's all, oh, there's all kinds of stuff coming out across. Oh, you can't see any of it either, can you? Here. Watch the excitement here. Okay, sweep width minimum. A pip from somewhere. <laughs> we don't know where. Sweep width coming up. So I'm going to turn the sweep width um, right down. The assumption being that it has, the, the, I now have a much more tiny sweep. I can move this more, more center it better. Oh my gosh, look at the display. Let's go back to XY here. It's not quite what I expected. Okay. Sweep out. Sweep back. Sweep minimum. Sweep up a little bit. Okay, moving the center frequency around. When you listen to it, this this sounds like the middle to me. Want to verify that frequency? So we would take could take the external marker, which is uh, still connected here. Wait a minute. Okay, so this is the external frequency, the external signal generator. This is the internal signal generator. Oh, this is the PIP, the, not the, uh, I'm sorry, this is the, yeah, marker, internal marker. I'm swinging it a long ways, going through its whole frequency range. What was that? We hear it, but we don't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming down frequency here, we're going by the double 10.7 spot. And we'll carry on. I'm going up in frequency. Whoop, another spot. Don't know what that is. That's 24 on the dial. 20, whoop, look at that one. That's nice. And another one. Woo! There's a beauty. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what all this means. I am just basically messing around, I'm wandering around the woods here going way up in frequency, uh, what are we up to here? way up, way up is 38 um, and it's not accurate so that's an, we don't hear that but we hear some invisible ones like that oh, the radio went so the, no, that radio's gone totally quiet Just feeding this into the IF. So uh, you know, the, the, I don't know what that is. Can't be sure of anything here right now. 
way up in frequency. 60 megahertz is the output supposedly of this marker. That's way down now. Way back down into this range that I, this one. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm just going to stop for a little bit. I'm going to reread this article. I'm going to think a little bit about what I'm doing here and what it looks like on the scope and uh, ponder what to do next. So remember, we're trying to find out, does this adder circuit work? And uh, can I get some benefit out of it uh, in, in any way, shape, or form, really? Oh, boy. Okay, I think, yeah, I think I'm stopping for a little bit here. Is a good idea. Great. Uh, fun, having fun. Fun is important. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the. Uh, um, here we are. I'm going to put the uh, frequency response curve back up on here. There we are. I'll give you a close-up view. I'm going to try to see if I can use this already to do some kind of alignment work. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, a couple things need to be adjusted here. Uh, boy, oh boy. First of all, I'm going to move the external generator out of the picture. Okay, it's, it's out of the picture. It looks like it wasn't in the picture. I'm going to vary the marker amp level. That's turning it down, but I think it jumps up. I think it, when you put it at zero, it jumps up. It come up slowly, it goes down, and then it starts going up properly here. Wow, that's that's way way stronger than the response. The response curve. Let me set this rate like that. That's kind of the minimum marker energy. I'm going to move the sweep center around here. Get rid of that buzzy sound, which are harmonics. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. That's in the center. I'm gonna change the sweep width to shrink it a little bit. There's a huge uh, sweep width happening now. I think this is the sound of the edges of the sweep being detected by the radio. And, and that kind of tough sound may be an overload. Let me, let me turn this down. Oh, can't, can't. Wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Let me put it back to the minimum. It's this one here. So you can hear the, the harmonics right up in this range. Interesting. If it's off to the side of the... Uh, uh, I don't know if I can finish my thought. Yeah, I think I can find the center better. The center appears to be the center. Expand the sweep again. Oh, I think the sweep output frequency is varying here as I vary the width, and that's why it's moving, I think. So we, we do want it over yonder here, right in this area. Okay, there's the response curve. If I take the marker amp out of the picture, there we are. Looks fantastic. The question is, is it centered on 10.7? We'll try to figure that out. Um, my external signal generator is hooked up to a counter, so I know what frequency it's on. Got this door open here. We'll close it. It's just better. Let's. Uh, so I'll move the external 
marker generator into the picture here. I'll try anyway. 10 3, 10 4, 10 4, 10 5, 10 6, 10 7 coming. 10 7 right here. Yeah, we'll look right at the top, right at the top of the peak there. You can see something right there, right on the top of the peak up here. Now I can see it with my eyes really well. Let me, uh, I, I, do, I do most of my seeing with my eyes. Let me, let me turn this down in brightness and maybe you can start to see the squiggle. The squiggle. And what frequency is that? My frequency counter says 10.705. If I force it right on to 10.7, which is just a little tricky. It wants to jump, jump around a little bit. There we are. That's okay. Well, I'm gonna get any closer than that. And the FIP still appears to be right here. I'm hitting this with all the power possible, I think. The internal marker generator is switched right off. Give it a little more. I got a little more here to, to give it. So yeah, that's a little more visible. That's dead on the top. 10.7. Thumbs up on my earlier alignment. But now the question is, is this the proper shape? This is really what we're after. To be the proper shape, this right here should be something like 10.7. should be 10.6 and 10.8 or the other way around perhaps depends which way the sweep has worked out so I'm gonna move this down to about I don't know, let, well, let's try it here we'll, we'll try it we'll just try it you know, it gives a bit of parallax there for my finger we'll try it on that line there we'll see what we get so I'll move it I'll move it down to there and to go up in frequency to go down there. Okay, and that's pretty clear that it's on the line where I want it. Now that reads 10.758 and I think we would want it to say 10.8. So this suggests that the width of this is insufficient and I think that jives with everything else I've done on this radio. I never got the IF bandwidth great enough to uh, settle the radio down properly. So let's get the diagram that comes in the manual up there. Um, as soon as I find what I did with it. There it is. Okay. For comparison. For comparison. So, in, in just in comparing it, you can see how much more rounded they have the top. Now, for me, when I looked at that, I said, oh, that's not a flat top. Well, it's not a flat top. It's not a point either. And you can see they've given the, the two values and how far down the curve it is. And roughly, I'd say a third of the way down. Roughly a third of the way down. So a third of the way down here would be one, two, three, four of these guys. So a little more than one. A, a little more than one. That doesn't look right. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't look right because I don't have this wide enough. Now if this generator were, were work, working in uh, ideally the way it's uh, purported to work, I should be able to achieve two small pips. One here and one over here at the same time. And that has to be done by beating two signals together. You, and I think you would want to beat, in this case, 10.7 and 100 kilohertz together. And that would give you a pip. So let's see if we can get 10.7. Visible with the internal 
marker generator then use the external one to generate the harmonics that should produce the 100 kilohertz pips and it shouldn't just be here it should be every 100 kilohertz another pip 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 sounds like a plan okay so first I'll get the external generator out of the picture right right out right out of the picture Turn on the internal marker amp. Yeehaw! Well, that's kind of interesting in a way because we know that peak is 10.7. I'm just trying to minimize the uh, the output here. Again, this doesn't look really proper. I don't think I'm getting the right pips. Change this frequency ever so slightly. There, so it's right on the top. Fantastic. Now I'll we'll introduce the other signal generator here uh, but I want to introduce it at uh, around let's try a million to start what would happen if you beat a million against 10 million you're going to get pips a million away on either side and a million is way too far a million millions way off my scope here so let's go down to well how far out is this is, is this display um, well, if this is supposed to be 10.7, 10.8, 10.9, 10.10, 10.10, that's 11. 11, kind of a megahertz from here to here. That would mean if I get it within 500 kilohertz of 10.7, or if I get it, if I set it to 500 kilohertz, we should start seeing stuff out here. Or less, we'll bring it in tighter. So down around 500, we should start seeing things zoom there quickly I'm not even looking at the scope so this is 600 here comes 500 anybody see anything anywhere I'm not at 500 yet okay, here's 500 Four, four, four fifty. nothing apparently there 410 what am I doing am I doing something wrong yeah the level's low Levels low. Levels low. Okay, hold on. So at 400, up in the level. Up in the level. There's no more upping of the level. Checking to make sure things are really plugged in. I think I think the answer is yes. But now it could be the pip is overwhelmed. That you know, I've got this very sensitive here. Sensitive. I don't see anything happening here. No pippage. No pippage. So the impression I'm getting is the uh, the adder circuit does not work. That's that's the impression I'm getting. Let's take it down lower. 400. 300. So at the 300, if at the 300. So you expect three uh, a pip 300. Every every 300 kilohertz, so that, that that would be down in here. Keep going lower. Hit the end of the road on this particular band, so we're going to flip to another band. Now I'm coming up from below 130, 150. Frequency counter is not happy the output of my signal generator has dropped off. Oh, I could, I could be running into problems with the signal generator at its limits not being so strong. Ugh. Okay, well, we'll assume that's not the problem. I don't know, my signal generator, my, my uh, frequency. I'm going just back and forth with the frequency very quickly. Okay. Come on, counter, don't let me down now. 150, 160, let's go down to 100. I don't believe my uh, my frequency counter is counting properly. So there is a dial on my signal generator and 100 would be right about here. Now assuming the signal generator is calibrated properly beating and producing a beat 
100 off, it should be appearing right in here. I don't see a thing. Don't see a thing. So, uh, we'll turn down, up the marker, and down, off. The marker ramp switched off. We're still feeding in the external the marker frequency, but I thought once you turn off the marker amp you would block this thing too but I don't know I don't know okay, let's move it around a bit it's got nothing to beat against anymore so you know it's not going to come through at a hundred kilohertz but if we snap it back up to 10.7 yeah let's see Oop, one right by right, there it is that's very doable very doable. So that's 10.762. Now that, that's workable. Um, uh, so let me pull out the supposed audio pip signal and see, see if that remains or disappears. There we go myself into a shock hazard there. Uh, well, there's still something there. Let me put it back in. Out and in. It's interesting. It just seems to be boosting it. Uh, it still seems to be... Like, it doesn't seem like it's the audio pip. It seems like it's just... some uh, RF there because I'm running the external at 10.7 well maybe this is how I'm going to use it uh, for now uh, I, I don't want to invest the time getting into a deep journey into the alignment generator just now uh, I really want to get this radio I'm working on finished I think I have enough I can do it I think I can do it. We do it right now. Well, it's just turning a couple of slugs. Okay, I get my slug turning tool, and the objective now would be to 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 to, to widen this, widen, like bring this peak, dull dull the peak, dull the peak. Okay, and I'm still listening to the radio. I'm gonna do the slugs kind of randomly here. All the peak. I basically, stagger tune these a little bit. I think is really what is going on. Oop! I don't want to do that. I want to keep it centered on 10.7. So I kind of blew that. Okay, so that's interesting. The lower slug really changes the uh, resonance point. My tool won't go in here. Another thing, uh, I, I won't say it. Okay, so I'm back in the first slug. It, it just seems to be weakening it. I don't see that it's widening it out. Let's go to the other transformer, top slug. Well, no, that's interesting. We'll put that one, in my mind, that one's off to the right. Let's go back to the other top slug. Wider? Anybody getting wider here? Yeah, I don't like that sound. Don't see it getting any wider. Let's go to the second transformer down to the bottom slug. What do you do? Oh, okay, so this is another frequency shifter. So the two frequency shifters, maybe if if done in combination, it give me a wider, a wider. That'll be like way down here. What happened? It's not, it's not shifting frequency here. It's, it's going up and down again. Well, we can add a little to the right side. Go 
to the other slide. Add a little to this side. Let's go back. So I'm doing the lower slugs in the two transformers. One I'm using to, to, to go to the right. This one. And the other one I'm using to go to the left. Now the marker let me put the marker back on 10.7 here because we need it to be right in the middle okay markers on 10.7 Ooh, look where that is well, how do we get way the heck over there because they're turning all these slugs that's how getting in the lower slug here okay over over you go okay so we're on 10.7 it sure did peak up didn't it Okay, so I'm going to move the marker down to the one-third point or so. That's 10.6. At 10.66. Way, oh my gosh, way down there. Oh, smokes. Okay, let's go to the other side and see if this really works. So 10 point, that's 10.7 down to 10.8. This is only supposed to be a third of the way down. Maybe our 10.8. Oh my gosh, it's right off. So, hmm, that's why we need these markers. Okay, I think it's a matter of spending quite a bit of time fiddling with these slugs back and forth and back and forth. So, I think I'm going to end the video right here. And tomorrow, uh, Hopefully get the IF aligned exactly as it should be, then I can proceed through the rest of the alignment properly, probably get all the proper results, finally, and be a happy guy and have a nice sounding receiver. I think I've got the wherewithal to get it done. That's what I think. Anyway, so thanks so much for watching. I know this is a little tricky to understand what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to say enough make it apparent but uh, it's tricky business and uh, but I feel like I'm making progress here <laughs> and that means it's a good time to quit so again thanks a lot for watching <laughs>